You might think, why write the synchronous JavaScript code with async await if you can just use promises instead? You know promises and how they work, so why learn a new syntax? Besides the fact that promise code can be confusing, because if we have some code outside the promise chain and another code inside the then method, the code outside the promise chain will run first. And that looks like the execution of code is jumping around from the end to the beginning. And one of the first things we learn in programming is that code executes from top to bottom. Writing a synchronous JavaScript this way also falls short in some situations, which I'll show you in this lesson. In this example, we have a uh, comment variable that's a string. And from that comment, we extract the hashtag. Then we use the insert comment function to insert the comment, which returns a promise resolving to the comment ID. We then use the comment ID to insert the hashtag as well, which also returns a promise that resolves with the hashtag ID. Finally, we log the comment ID. If we run this program, we get a comment ID is not defined error. And that's because comment ID is only available in this scope and not in this one. This type of situation is quite common in the real world. You have a chain of promises and you want to use an intermediate value from the previous chain but can't because each then method has its own scope. In practice, the promise chain will oftentimes be much longer and you would want to access multiple values from different stages in the chain. There are a few not so ideal ways you can solve this and keep the promise chain. I'll show them to you and they will refactor to async await so you can compare them. One thing you might do is extract the comment ID variable to the outer scope. And because we have a name clash, let's rename this variable to new comment ID. And then we'll assign the new comment ID to comment ID. So now we should have access to comment ID in here. Let's run the program and uh, it works. Now imagine doing this not for one, but four or five variables spread out across different links in the promise chain and coming up with new variable names for each one of them. It's tedious and it's hard to keep track where the variables were created, assigned, and what values they hold. This type of code is very hard to debug in production. And I speak from my own experience. Another thing you could do is have the first link in the chain resolve with the comment ID by appending a then method to insert hashtag function and inside it return the comment ID. And then the second link of the promise chain will replace hashtag ID with comment ID. This is another solution to this problem, but nesting promises like this takes away the advantage of chaining them and we're back to having a pyramid of doom in our code. Ugh. So let's do this the proper way and use async await. Let's keep the old code by commenting it out and we'll add a try catch block. We'll create a variable comment ID, which is the result of calling and awaiting insert comment function. Then we insert the hashtag, but don't assign the result value to a variable because we don't use it. And finally, we console log the comment ID. Let's not forget to console log the error as well. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And the program works just as before. Compare this with this. Async await is so much better. Another situation where async await excels over promises is when you have a series of async functions and some of them happen inside an if condition. Here's another version of the previous code example where comment doesn't have a hashtag, so the hashtag will be null. In that case, we don't want to insert a hashtag that doesn't exist. So just return the comment ID so we can log it down below. And again, we ended up with a solution that's nesting promises and there's no real way around this. Because if you get rid of the then method and the return statement, when the insert hashtag function rejects, the error won't be caught by this catch block. And that's usually what we expect to happen. And if you do add the return statement, the next value in the promise chain will be the comment ID or the hashtag ID if there is a hashtag. And that's inconsistent, confusing and prone to bugs. So the only way is to append the then method to insert hashtag and make sure the next value in the promise chain is always the comment ID. Fasting forward to the async await solution. This is similar to what we've seen before, except the insert hashtag function is wrapped inside a conditional. That's it. The solution is simple and does what you expect it to do. If any of the functions reject with an error, it will be handled coherently inside the catch block. There is also no ambiguous variable. Now that you're aware of the scenarios where async await shines, I hope you're convinced to use it going forward because writing a synchronous code in JavaScript is much nicer using async await than plain old promises.